All right, so before everybody starts going on about how the RTX 3060 is sold out and you've already seen all the reviews, this is not a review. The review will be a written form and it'll go up on the site whenever I'm done with it, but the fact that the card showed up mm, a day after the launch happened, well, it's kind of hard to get it done in time. However, what we are going to do with the RTX 3060 is we're going to explore and we're going to test NVIDIA's implementation of the resizable bar feature. So you may be familiar with this from AMD's marketing with smart access memory, although they claim that there's more to their smart access memory than just enabling a resizable bar feature. So, well, that's probably true. And it seems like NVIDIA is not just allowing you to turn on the toggles. So it is limited to certain games for right now. So it's the, the first implementation has gone live for the 30 series notebooks, like the mobile parts, and on the desktop side for the RTX 3060. It's not available across the stack yet, it's just on the one card. So we wanted to take a look at this. We are using our standard test bench, which is an X570 platform with a Ryzen 9 5900X and 32 gigs of DDR4 3600 memory on a PCIe Gen 4 drive. And the whole idea here is make sure we have PCIe Gen 4 because this card does support it. Although, for resizable bar, that's not quite a necessity because on GeForce, it is working on 400, 500 series motherboards, Zen 2, Zen 3, and on the Intel side, 4 and 500 series motherboards over there. So you just gotta make sure that your motherboard supports resizable bar. It's on the latest uh, process, you know, the processor, the latest BIOS, all of those things need to be in place. And there is a way to check to make sure it is enabled. We'll leave links to the article that's going to accompany this because I am doing an article for this. So if you want to just look at that, but we just use this card in a vacuum. We're not comparing it against every card on the market. So it's just this card bone stock, which this card again is the EVGA GeForce RTX 3060 black edition. This is the one that was designed around that $329 uh, MSRP and it was available for it for a moment before it went out of stock hopefully more will come back in because it's an alright card um, but let's uh let's jump into those results with the games that I have available the only one that I don't have that is supported is Assassin's Creed Valhalla but with that out of the way let's take a look at the results starting at the top of the charts so in our testing we kick things off with Battlefield 5 now all of these games are gonna be at 1440p we could have done 1080p, all this jazz, but we just wanted to see at 1440p, did we see a difference? Because even with smart access memory, we saw it kind of diminish returns as you go up. So it's quite possible here we'll get better results at 1080p and we'll explore that further going on. But Battlefield 5, we see a 10% performance increase by in enabling resizable bar. Now this is DX12 ultra settings, no ray tracing enabled on this, on this. We didn't use ray tracing for any of these testing. We just did straight up rasterized performance. Borderlands 3 give us about a 5% increase. It's one of the smaller increases that we got going down the list here. So Borderlands 3 at 1440p with high settings, we go from 98 to 103 and the 1% percentiles go from 84 to 88. Again, only thing changed was we enabled resizable bar. Forza Horizon 4 saw a respectable 7% increase going from 119 to 127 and the 1% percentiles got an even better boost than that. So you know, that, that really does help smooth that out. Although that game's already running really, really good. Now the next game is where you're gonna start to see and feel improvements with Gears 5. We got a 6% performance increase at 1440p ultra settings going from 62 FPS up to 66. And that 48 to 52 brings that 1% percentile closer to that 60 FPS mark for absolutely lock butter smooth 60 FPS gameplay. Now, Metro Exodus, we see an 11% increase. This is the largest increase that we've seen in all of our testing. And we go from 92 to 102, and the 1% percentiles go from 70 all the way up to 80. That's a, that's a substantial 10 FPS increase. Again, just from enabling a feature. Now, Watchdog Legions, we see a fair 7% increase. We go from 60 to 64 on the averages and 49 to 51 on the 1 percent percentiles. Now that's at 1440p, very high settings. Now, last but not least is Red Dead Redemption 2 with probably the weakest, actually it is the, the weakest, performance increase at 4% going from 79 to 82 on the average FPS and 1% percentiles go from 66 to 70 and that is at 1440p with a balanced setting across the stack. So 
balanced on both cards. That, I, I don't really care for testing Red Dead Redemption 2 because it changes based on what graphics card you put in and you have to make sure that all those little sliders are in the right place. So that's why it's not in our normal test bench suite. But for this purposes, we did have it and we were only doing one card. So we see there a range from four to 11%. That is uh, somewhere in the ballpark of what we saw with Smart Access Memory. Now, I know somebody's going to ask out there, but Keith, why did they only do a select handful of titles? Well, apparently they're going through and doing validation with it because Hardware Unboxed, you've probably seen that video already, where they tested Smart Access Memory on for the 6800 series, and they found that there were times that there was regressive performance. A very large percentage of the time, there was within margin of error difference and sometimes there was no difference but anything over four percent four percent and up is a substantial difference so it looks like what they're doing is they're whitelisting the games that are going to really benefit from this feature and you'll probably see a lot more going forward but i doubt we're going to see a lot of older games get this support so it's really cool to see the 3060 it, it, because based on the reviews that we've seen so far the results were kind of ho-hum they were around that 2070 to 2070 super which puts it on par with like a 5700 xt and that's i mean that that's decent but at, at the price but if at 330 don't buy it at 400 plus please don't do that that's you, you, no is all i can say about that just wait um but if you can edge out five to 10% more performance on that one. And if we see that across the stack, so we see the 3060 Ti, 3070, 3080, 3090, getting those kind of performance uplifts, well, that's only good things for the people out there. And the good chance, there's a really good chance that most people that have any of these cards, the few that are out there that have them, a lot of people do have them, guys. I mean, even if you can't get them, there are a lot of people with them. Chances are they're on a Zen 2, Zen 3 platform, or they're on a Comet Lake platform. Now, a lot of people are gonna have the older, uh, Coffee Lake, was it Coffee Lake? Yeah, I guess, the, the 9,000 series. But if you got a 10,000 series or newer, you're probably gonna be able to take advantage of this. So, more will roll out as time goes on, but you know what, if you wanna see the article, it's just these charts regurgitated and uh, a few pictures, that's about it. But guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you got something out of it. If you think Resizable Bar is something cool, do you think AMD really needs to roll Smart Access Memory out past the Zen 3 and 500 series chipsets. It'd be really cool to see it on Zen 2. Maybe we'll test this 3060 on an Intel platform and see how that does. We got a B-Class board, a B460, with a 10400K or 10400 in the closet. That might be a really interesting one to look at. Okay, I'm done rambling. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment down below and we will catch you guys in the next one.